Hello, welcome to Coffee Break with Microchip Technology. Coffee Break is our ongoing forum in which we discuss new and evolving technology all in about the amount of time it takes to drink a cup of coffee. I'm your host, Eric Glatfelter. Let's check in with our moderator, Aliyah Fahoud. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. We are currently live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And you can participate in today's episode by leaving your questions and comments in the chat or you can email us at livestream at microchip.com at for broadcast. Don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe to our social media platforms. And for today's episode, you can visit us online at microchip.com slash survey to share your thoughts, and you could be one of three lucky participants to win an exclusive Coffee Break mug. Back to you, Eric. Thanks, Aaliyah. On to today's topic improving equipment uptime and reliability with silicon carbide eFuse solutions. Joining us in the studio today is Jason Chang, product marketing engineer here at Microchip. Welcome to the program. Thank you, great to be here. All right, so let's get into our topic. Now, before we get into the details of the eFuse solution, let's talk about just electrification a little bit. More and more things are becoming electrified, and recently we're seeing a, a big trend in very high voltage and high power uh, applications. So if somebody's used to designing at, at lower power or medium power and now they're working in the high voltage or high power world, what are, what are maybe some design considerations that may not be obvious? Well, they're different when they're considering the switching frequencies and the switching efficiency of the higher voltage, in example, uh, silicon carbide devices. And they also want to pay attention to the thermals on their, in their system and also in particular circuit protection, which is the topic of today's conversation. Sure, yeah. okay. So with, with circuit protection, right, we've got sort of uh, electromechanical uh, circuit protection and now we've got solid state. So electromechanical has been around forever. Um, solid state I think is, is pretty mature, a lot of uh, applications using that. Um, but now again, we're kind of getting into you know higher voltage applications. But can you give us a breakdown, maybe of you know like what are some of the pros and cons or, or the trade-offs between an electromechanical protection solution and a solid-state protection solution? Yes, let's do that. Take a couple of key points. One is at the operating current level, with uh, eFuse or solid-state circuit breaker. I'll be referring to eFuse throughout this uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. It uses uh, basically gate drive on board the the PCB. In, uh, in an electromechanical system, you require a coil for to address the heating, that the heat that builds up during the process, as well as economizer, which require to uh, safely de-energize the system. So there's external components on the mechanical system that will take up space and additional costs and potentially be uh, you know reliability weak points. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What else? In addition, um, response times. Okay. Typically. Uh, Electromechanical systems will operate in a range of you know, millisecond ranges in terms of reaction time, whereas eFuse can be much quicker in microseconds, you know, 100 to 500 times faster. And that could be a difference between tripping early enough to protect your system versus a hard failure when it's too late and the heat's built up already. In the sure. System. Okay. Now, millisecond's pretty fast to me as a human, so going to microsecond other than the, the mathematical aspect of it, <laughs> like what are some real world applications where that might be particularly relevant? I'm assuming applications where latency is particularly critical. Perhaps an uh, <coughs> example may be like a, being electrification, a lot of EVs today, or even hybrid vehicles, or battery systems, and you need to protect the DC circuits, or of a DC, for example, a DC converter. So the difference between maybe taking milliseconds is uh, blowing a one-time fuse and you need to take it offline for serviceability, you know, so your vehicle, that particular module going down, or uh, using e-fuse, which trips much faster, which much lower, uh, lower current and energy, that you can protect the actual fuses from blowing and keep your system functioning because e-fuse can also be resettable in the system without having to take it offline. Okay. Interesting. Okay, yeah. so how about the controllability of electromechanical versus solid state? That's an excellent point. Because it's resettable, it, <coughs> it means it's controllable. You can control when you have to reset the system. In addition, you can set using the, you know, the time characteristic curve that's built into the eFuse environment. You can set your, for example, trip currents, your mm -hmm. under voltage diagnostics, yeah, the temperature uh, trip points. You can monitor all those uh, key elements to determine an optimal point to to operate your e solution. 
All these are not present in a mechanical system, which is basically set and go. And right. once it blows, it's one time use. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> so I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking of my old car, my first car, <laughs> where you actually had the fuse box in the footwell somewhere, and yeah. every now and then they blow, and you actually have to physically replace the fuse. So with an auto reset, you don't have to touch anything basically once the system is set up. Right. That's actually a good point because the e-fuse can also be used as auxiliary high voltage auxiliary e-fuse to protect other e-fuse, uh, other fuses rather in the circuit. For example, a larger one-shot power fuse that protects the high voltage system. Mm -hmm. That blows, and essentially that's a one-time event, and it, it takes your system offline. And auxiliary e fuse can actually protect that. You reset and keep your system theoretically in operation much longer period of time without having to take it offline. All right, okay. interesting. Okay, so we've got a demonstrator board uh, here in the here in the studio with us. Can yes. you uh, talk us through kind of the main features of this uh, evaluation board? Yes, I can. So the user should be seeing also, the visitor should be seeing a diagram online. This is a board based on Microchip's MSIC uh, silicon carbide devices that are clipped on here on this heat sink. It'll be one or two devices depending on your current rating and the voltage rating on, on this device. Now, uh, this uses our 700 volt silicon carbide MOSFETs for 400 volt battery systems, or 1200 volt silicon carbide MOSFETs for our 800 volt battery system uh, boards here. They come in 10, 20, and 30 amp variants. The drives are both high side, low drives, so it's all built in without need for external drivers that we mentioned earlier mm -hmm. for, for silicon carbide based e fuse. And uh, input voltages are nine, a low set of 9 and 16 volts, so safe, the low voltage while the output voltage are isolated uh, on the high voltage side, but it supports up to 400 and 800 volt battery systems with some overhead on the blocking voltage with our silicon carbide MOSFETs. Okay, interesting. All right, now we've got some waveforms to look at, right? So who doesn't want to look at a waveform? Um, so walk us, walk us through the performance, uh, if you would, of the solution. You got it. So on the left side here, we have a traditional circuit breaker. On the right side, shown the E-fuse. Mm -hmm. So this traditional circuit breaker, you'll see a fairly large curve amplitude curve here. And essentially, it is your DIDT or the buildup of your electric current um, in a traditional circuit breaker. As the current built up to our ISC, and that's the short circuit current trip point, you know, the, the relays or the fuse monitoring, detecting. So there's a period of T response time shown on, on the curve of the mm -hmm. X axis. So as it's determining all that time, the energy is building up, uh, the heat's building up, and at some point, the relay or the fuse will react and uh, presumably safely shut down the circuit. Okay. Now, on the right side, and, and as it does that though, because there's also inductance build up, I should say, this mechanical system, there's the potential for arcing as well because you have all the energy that suddenly has to be dissipated. Mm -hmm. Now, with uh, EFI shown on the right diagram, it's a, you can see how low the curve and how short the response times are. It's very fast in terms of yeah. microseconds, so you don't have to wait that long period for energy to build up. And it's very low latency, low, sorry, low current and low uh, energy in the system. So you don't have all that uh, arc and potential. It's not existent. And as a result, you know, downstream, your wiring, your loads are all protected, and the heat is not as destructive in your, in your system due to the e-fuse. Sure. Okay. And we've got, uh, we've got a, a shot here of the actual let-through current? Yes. So, so we did some testing on actual on this, this actual board here. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we found out was that the, the, Due to the limitation of the probe, you'll see that it's 3.8 kiloamps. Essentially, the system spiked to as high as 6 kiloamps, so much of the amplitude I showed earlier in the left traditional circuit diagram on the previous slide. As it peaked to 33.8 kamps, and then there's a point which saturates and starts uh, de energize uh, the relay trips and starts de energizing. Mm -hmm. Well, the E fuse, the inset, reacts so quickly that it registered, you can see noise level. We have to take the inset yeah. and show it's right. only 128 amps versus right. the 3.8 kiloamps when using e-fuse. And it's a matter of just uh, a few amps in terms of trigger uh, e-fuse monitoring. Okay. So that, that means that it shuts off the system safely, de-energizes the system much quicker, much sooner before heat builds up, before a, a higher you know failure could occur on a single fuse downstream somewhere. Okay, so that's much less stress, m less stress, excuse me, on yes. the system as a whole. Yeah. 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 Okay. Much less stress and much less heat in the system. Yes. Okay, interesting. So um, can you give us some kind of an overview of the design considerations for the board? I mean, there's there's a number of components here in addition right. to the silicon carbide uh, MOSFETs and the controller, right? Right. So one important aspect, we do offer the isolation, so separate a high voltage and low right. voltage zones. So low voltage zones can easily, you know, safely control the high voltage zones, which is where all the powering and switching occurs. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we use a system level approach where whenever possible, Microchip offers the full solution. So for example, our PIC microcontrollers, mm -hmm. or our gate driver solution, um, various analog voltage regulators, the LIN controller, the LIN inter communication interface, we offer all that in the board and microchip can offer that solution in a single one-stop shop. All right, so this is all ready to go, it's right? It's all ready, ready to go. Design with it. So, yes. so if somebody likes what they what they see here, um, how, how would they get more information? How would they get a hold of a board? You should see a QR code on screen. That QR code will take you to the same webpage, microchip.com slash E dash, capital F, USE, mm -hmm. microchip.com slash EFUSE. All design files, user guide, and explanations are there. You will need a microchip.com account, so once you have that, all the information is at your fingertips. And if you want more general information, microchip.com slash SIC will give you all the silicon carbide-based MSIC uh, product information there. All right, yep. ready to go. All right, well thanks thanks so much for that overview, Jason. Uh, let's go Thank to you. Aaliyah and see if there are any questions from the viewers today. Yes, Eric, we did receive a few questions via email. The first one is, can SIC MOSFETs be paralleled to achieve a higher current capability? Yes, uh, silicon carbide MOSFETs can be paralleled. In fact, our boards on the 20 and 30 amp boards that are available for 400, 800 volt battery systems, they use dual MOSFETs parallel for the power and efficiency, switching RDA, low RDA sound and switching efficiency. And lower current, can you can go with one due to the efficiency of our devices. Okay. Great. Uh, the second question is, what packages are available for your SIG products? We offer a broad-based uh, range of packages, both through-hole and uh, surface mount. So on the through-hole side, uh, standard ones for uh, our silicon carbide MOSFETs include uh, TO247, 3-lead or 4-lead. And then on the surface mount side, TO263, the D2 pack 7-lead variety, as well as our uh, D3 pack, the larger TO268 package. And then we have additional uh, surface mount packages. We can come back and talk to you, the audience about uh, toward the end of this year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And another question I have for you is, in the event of a short circuit, how long can the SIC MOSFETs operate before degrading or failing? That's an excellent question, because that's the difference between either the silicon carbide, the MOSFET devices failing or recovering. Uh, our 700 volt uh, silicon carbide MOSFETs can recover in the range of uh, 10 microseconds, and that's on par with what the IGBTs do well today at, in that range of 10 microseconds. Now, the 1200 volts and higher voltages, silicon car carbide MOSFETs uh, are a little bit lower. And 1200 volts, for example, we're in the three to four microsecond range, still adequate enough for a system to recover, uh, for at least our silicon carbide MOSFETs to recover in the system and continue operating. Because uh, at one key point, we do also make sure that we do test it beyond standard qual, so we hit our devices, for example, in avalanche test or unclamped inductive switching repetitively, 100,000 cycles with little to no degradation. So that means when it recovers, you, you, you can be rest assured that our devices will keep on operating. Great, and why is solid state circuit protection better than mechanical protection for DC circuits? Well, you feel is better because there's no moving components and as a result, it stays up and operation a longer period of time. Also, it's resettable, so you don't have to take it offline. Whereas in a mechanical system, once you relay or fuse trips, you have to take that module out and then replace it or, or you know, replace that fuse or do something with it. And not so with e-fuse. You can reset it uh, with a controller or through the LIN uh, interface. Also, packaging allows you to hide it away, tuck it away more compactly in a design, for example, on a vehicle or industrial equipment out of the way um, and still be fully operational. Whereas on a mechanical system, you have to place it in the accessible point. So that could impact the way you lay out a system, the size of a system, the efficiency of a system. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I have a question for you um, from LinkedIn, and it is, what is the max current can E plus fuse support? The board itself is rated to 30 amps, but obviously the trip points can be much higher. You saw in a previous example, 128 amps. Um, I'm not sure the maximum ability of, of trip point, but we can come back to you with that question with our, S, with, with our application uh, response. All right, and another LinkedIn question is, how will we reset once breakout happens? There is a, there's a PIC control arm board as well as a LIN communication interface. So the two ways of doing it is using onboard controller to reset the 
to the tr to the trigger points, or you can connect to a LIN interface and use that to you know reset the system. All right, and can the e fuse be configured for bidirectional voltage blocking, and can it be used on AC circuits? It can be used in AC circuits, so I'll answer the easy part first. <laughs> the second part is that for uh, bidirectionally, our boards are configured for unidirectional, uh, single directional protection today, or one direction. If a uh, customer wanted to use for bidirectional, you would add another uh, MOSFET for the reverse uh, uh, switching in uh, anti-parallel series common mode configuration. Once that's set up, then you're able to go bidirectional and still offer the uh, I guess the blocking voltage and the circuit protection in either direction. Great, and just a couple more questions for you. Uh, which parameters are configurable and what diagnostic capability does it have? In terms of uh, configurability, we follow, we provide a uh, time trace, uh, a, t a time curve uh, characteristic uh, option where you can look at the current, the temperature, and then the, the under voltage uh, capabilities and the diagnostics will monitor these uh, systems, these, these rather these uh, attributes. All right, uh, last question for you, Jason, is have you considered the impact of system parasitic inductances? Uh, y yes, we have actually, and that's the reason we also went to E-Fuse, because E-Fuse does not have all these mechanical components and doesn't build up uh, the high energy level to, uh, to potentially trigger a arcing event. Uh, we went with the silicon carbide-based E-fuse system, and also we use silicon carbide in this in the E-fuse because of the rugged reliability aspect. We do test for, you know, the ruggedness, reliability, and inductance aspect, and it's all very low and very fast switching in a silicon carbide-based system. All right. Well, those are all the questions I have for you today, Jason. Thank you for answering them, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on LinkedIn. If you have additional questions or comments, you can email us at livestream on microchip.com after the broadcast. Back to you guys. Thanks, Aaliyah. Jason, thank you again thank for you. joining us and sharing your knowledge about this. And thank you to our audience for making some time to listen into Coffee Break today. Please visit us at microchip.com slash coffee break. There you can see our remaining episodes for the season. You can sign up for subscriptions and add things to your calendar, and you can peruse previously recorded sessions um, of all of the Coffee Break episodes. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next time.